Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nico, for those of you who are new here. If you are a loyal family member and you are subscribed, thank you, welcome back. If you wanna be part of the family, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the questions that you have asked me in my DMs and in my comments. I've gotten a lot of questions and a lot of them just keep coming up over and over again. So I'm just gonna to try to answer all of those and I'm gonna to try to do it as quickly as possible so this video isn't too long. So let's just get Get straight into it year one freshman year I came into undergrad and I had no idea what was going on I went to a high school that didn't prepare me we didn't have AP classes we had three AP classes and everyone would get a one out of five on every test so it was just bad um, I was not really prepared for undergrad and that's okay like it doesn't matter where you come from it just matters like the work that you put into it and your perseverance so I came into undergrad and I took chemistry over the, during the school year, and then I took bio in the summer between first and second year. A lot of you guys have been asking me, is it bad if I take a summer class? No, it doesn't matter, especially if it's gonna help you in the long run. Um, what I don't recommend is taking a summer class at a university outside of your own, uh, just because when you apply, it's gonna be hectic trying to get those transcripts in, uh, and you really just should do everything at one university. It's gonna, like, it's gonna help you down the road. Um, but it's not the end of the world if that's something that you did do. Uh, it just might be a little bit harder when you apply. So freshman year, I didn't volunteer. I didn't do any of that. I just focused on my schoolwork and I had work study. So I worked uh, tutoring SAT. Between my first and second year, I took chemistry. Uh, so a lot of people asked me if that was bad. No, I don't think it was bad. I think it actually helped me. Um, and it's not something that came up in conversation later when I applied to medical school. Um, and then I did second year. So second year, I was, you know, I was feeling better. I felt like I can do this. So I took chemistry. I took orgo and physics together. I start, started volunteering at a hospital. And the cool thing about my hospital is that I could transfer between floors. So I would do like two months in the ICU, then two months in uh, pediatrics, and then two months in mental health. So the cool thing about my volunteer hospital was that I could get exposure to a lot of different fields of medicine and kind of see where I uh, see myself. So if you guys can find something like that, um, definitely go ahead and do it. You don't need a million hours of volunteering. People have asked me, how many hours did you volunteer? The hours don't matter. What matters is what you got out of it and what you can convey to medical school admission committees. You want to show that those hours weren't just to check off the box of, oh yes, I volunteered. You wanna show that those hours meant something for you, that you made a difference in your own life, in the lives of others, and that you're convinced that medicine is for you, right? Uh, so the hours don't matter, but because everyone asked me, I did, I think that by the end, I had like around 700 or 800 hours of volunteering. Uh, but again, I just did like three hours here and there. I would have like three hour blocks and I just started in my second year. So the hours do add up. Don't stress too much about the hours. And a lot of people ask me, did I have any C's on my transcript? So I had a C plus in Orgo 2. I got all A's my second semester um, of second year, but I did have a C plus in Orgo 2 and that was horrible. I felt like it was the end of the world. I felt like I was never going to get into medical school, but honestly, it doesn't matter. You have so many semesters, so many opportunities to show that you're capable, even your MCAT. So having one C or C plus or even two on your transcript, yes, it's hard because you have to come back from that and you have to really make sure you get all 4.0s after those C's but it's not the end of the world and it's not a problem as long as you come back from it. So I'm gonna put in my like GPA transcript thing, like a little screenshot here, and you're gonna see that I had like a 3.6 that semester because of the C plus, and I had to work so hard to bring it back up to a 3.86. So um, it's not the end of the world, it's possible, and I had a C plus on my transcript. So between second and third year, I did research. I did research at NYU. They have a summer undergraduate research program. Guys, you need to apply to these programs. They are lit, like you basically get paid to do research. Um, everything's paid for, you get paid a stipend and usually the stipends are pretty large. Um, they give you living accommodations, they give you a PI, they give you a project and you just do 
research over the summer. Uh, and a lot of these programs, even though they're like PhD oriented, uh, you can get a physician mentor. So I had a physician mentor that I would go to the hospital with um, and just do rounds. And I felt that this experience was so important for me and I talked a lot about it in my, uh, in my application because it showed me that I wanted to be more in the hospital, in the clinic, in the patient interaction. Like I wanted to be what, I wanted to do what the physicians were doing, not what the researchers were doing. Um, so even if you do research and it's not for you, just be honest about it. That's what I did. Um, I basically just said, I see the importance of research. I tried it out and it wasn't for me, but I kept doing research because I felt like maybe it was just that project that I didn't like. So moving into my third year, I was doing my volunteer hours. I was taking my classes. I started studying for my MCAT, which you guys know didn't go well the first time. And I started research at a lab in my school. Um, so I was doing a lot. I had a lot on my plate and I was working work study. So I just did too much my third year. It was my worst semesters, like not academically. I got 4.0s both semesters but I just think it was like I put too much on my plate and I learned through that experience that like you don't need to do a million things um, you can do sometimes less is more and quality is more um, so I kind of just overloaded myself with work that semester um, those semesters sorry in my third year but it's okay like academically I did fine um, it was just not it was probably just my worst semester like mentally I just did too much so I started my fourth year and I was like okay I'm not gonna do so much it's not I, I need to like calm down so I said that but I actually did uh, my honors thesis in my fourth year so I, again I like overloaded myself with work but academically I did fine I kind of just like pushed through it um, and I finished my bio major in May and I finished my honors thesis so I had an honors thesis in research but again in my class in medical school think about how many people apply without honors thesis is these these I don't know how to say thesis um, but and they don't and they get into medical school so you don't need all of this this is just what I did um, and I finished my undergrad and I realized well I finished my bio major and I realized that I've always wanted to do the Spanish major and I never got to study abroad I just had like regrets um, so I actually ended up adding an extra semester and instead of graduating in May 2017, I graduated in uh, January 2019, 2018, sorry. So I extended my graduation date. I added a Spanish major so that I could study abroad. And this is all stuff that I wish I had done previously. So if I could go back in time, like I don't have any regrets, uh, but I think I would have been a Spanish major and then a bio minor, but I'm not too sure because the bio major actually helped me in medical school. So maybe I would have just committed to both majors earlier on, but I definitely wish I had studied abroad way earlier than I did. Uh, so basically I studied abroad um, and in my study abroad experience, I had a project which was basically bringing kids from the clinic, from their, from the mountain. So I lived, I was living in Cusco, Peru. Uh, so the kids lived at the bottom of the mountain and the clinic was at the top and it was like a 40 minute bus ride. So I would go pick up the kids every day and then bring them to the, the dental clinic. So I would bring them to the dentist and then I would bring them home. And I did that all summer. Um, and then I finished off my Spanish major in my fourth year, in my fifth year, I guess. Um, and I graduated with a 3.8. So basically to answer your questions, the most commonly asked questions were, how many hours do you need of volunteering, of um, shadowing? And my answer is, it's personal. It's each person needs a different amount of hours because I can do 100 hours and maybe my 100 hours were more valuable than your 5,000 hours hours at the hospital it's just the way that we can convey that message in our amcast and it's basically like i said it's the quality over the quantity um the other question that i had was what was your gpa i graduated with a 3.86 uh but i did have c pluses i had the c plus on my transcript uh, so i didn't have all a's uh i did have a c plus but it wasn't mentioned in my um in my application because like I said I had the opportunity to 
kind of bounce back. Uh, and that's something that you guys can do as well. And I did do research, but it's really not necessary. You don't need to do it unless you feel that you want to do it. Um, as long as you're being honest, that's going to be uh, conveyed in your application to medical school. So this video ended up being a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. So hopefully it was helpful for you guys. Uh, make sure you click that like button down below and leave me a comment. I love uh, meeting with you guys, talking with you guys. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you guys want to see. I want to give you guys content that you guys want to watch. So see you guys next time.